ourselves as patients and patient advocates. Modern medicine has finally reached a tipping point to where the medical utility of cannabis can no longer be denied. It stops seizures that other medicines can't touch. It's a strong anti-medic, you know, it stops you from being nauseated, it gives you the munchies, and it's a potent <coughs> anti-inflammatory, meaning it, it stops the inflammation. It's far on pain without the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory pill side effects. Hit the liver, hit the kidney, uh, get, get you pretty bad, yeah. even the stomach, eat a whole. We know that. Amazing yeah. uses. And we're now learning the amazing pathways to which these work, you know, forever. People said, oh, you know, marijuana uh, solves cancer or treats cancer. Well, you know what? We've identified the same pathway in the number one anti-cancer drug that's in cannabinoids. And you know what? As far as gabapentin, a potent uh, neuroleptic medicine that stops the neurotransmission of pain in the brain, that pathway's in cannabinoids as well. Modern medicine has passed a point where there's beyond any doubt at all. And as uh, we also have learned that as a medical doctor license in this state, we've got to be careful authorizing it. You've heard some of the horror stories. Nurse practitioners have lost their licenses with them uh, doing some impropriety as far as their recommendations. But as a medical doctor licensed in this state, I've had the opportunity to recommend a few infrequent medical cannabis authors, uh, patients for use of medical cannabis that are justified and covered under the state law. And they have to meet four standards for me to recommend the cannabis. It has to work better than anything else that they've tried, and that needs to be documented in the records. It can be thrown out of court since the Fry case six years ago. If it's not well documented, it needs to be failure doc on everything else needs to be well documented. In fact, the cannabis works better than anything else. Number two, the patient needs to do it in a manner that does not harm the body. This means vaping and not smoking. You know, products of combustion are bad on the lungs. It may not cause cancer, and it appears it may retard or slow the progression of cancer, even maybe even treat it, maybe prevent it. But it's a bad idea. So number two is, you know, do it in a manner that doesn't harm the body. The third requirement I have before starting a patient or authorizing them to use medical cannabis is that they tolerate the side effects, whether it's the forgetfulness or the paranoia or the munchies, or maybe that's the benefit from it or if it lists them out of this, the funk that they're in because they think of things they don't normally think about connect dots may not necessarily need to be connected. It takes their mind somewhere else. That's why it's more useful for PTSD, by the way. But that's the fourth. The third thing is they tolerate the side effects. And the fourth and final thing is they know what's in their medicine and what is not in their medicine. Yeah. yeah. Woo. The reoccurring theme of these four basic tenets that I have recommending medical cannabis is the number one rule of medicine, that's first, do no harm. Today I'm here to explain how the state, specifically the elected officials here behind us, have been derelict in their duty, protecting mm -hmm. the patients in the rush to pass Senate Bill 5052, oh, the Patient no. Protection <laughs> Bill. Patient you talk about bill. a misnomer. No. The officials behind us have violated the first rule of medicine, and they've lied, or worse, were misled by the LCB, the Liquor Control Board, sure, oh, Liquor sure, and Cannabis sure. Control Board. How? Specifically, I will call out Senator Rivers. Call out Senator yeah. Rivers in her effort to roll medical cannabis into the recreational market. She repetitively said that the state's marijuana is tested and safe, and medical is not. Let's hold the oh. I took her to case on that. And you can look this up in the Seattle Times. Evan Bush followed me around for several days this week, collected samples from uh, a couple of different dispensaries in town. I took it to six different labs in the Pacific Northwest. Five of them were 502 labs to see if they really are testing. Are they consistent? Are anybody monitoring the labs? And this is what we found. Remember, 250 pesticides are authorized to use on cannabis in this state but there is not one approved lab in the state that can test for cannabinoids. Oh, excuse, me, excuse me, there's not one lab in the state that can test for pesticides. Yet 250 or more are uh, allowed to be used. When the same concentrates were analyzed, we took some concentrates and we made sure it was homogenized, same lot number, same package, and we took to six different labs. The same concentrates were analyzed in these six different labs, found these poisonous 
solvents. Oh, man. And by the way, none of the labs have found the six. One lab found one, another one found B, another one found C, another one found D, and another one found E. But none of the other labs found the other solvents. They wow. were alkane, wow. butane, methanol, isopropanol, and even acetone above the threshold levels is what's in the concentrates at the 502 stores. And Evan Bush, the Seattle Times, has that well documented. Oh my God. That same concentrate that was 100% homogenized represented of having a certain THC level when we took to five different 502 stores in the Seattle area had a 500% variance in the Delta 9 THC level. One lab said it had 9% by weight. Another lab said 45% by weight. Wow. <laughs> now when we first started this little uh, sting study to prove that Central Rivers is lying, Evan Bush uh, wanted to make sure that, that we were doing everything, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And um, he asked, what degree of error would be acceptable, Gil, between one lab and another? I said, five, maybe 10%. Give them 10%, okay? They're new. It's a steep learning curve. No one's been doing this a year. 500% is the percent increase between 9 and 45, my friends. And this is a problem because on medical cannabis patients, We've learned, and Sanjay Gupta has documented this well, that there's an entourage effect, a synergistic effect where the things work together. That's why CBD only bills don't work because now we're realizing that you need a little bit of THC to get that full benefit. Yes. Okay? And yeah. we're finding out that the CBD to THC ratio of five to one is the minimum that will do this synergistic, this entourage effect. Yeah, full CBD plant. bills like what passed in Missouri, what's passed in uh, in conservative states uh, in the South, Alabama or, passed one. Alabama particularly, they are a joke. It's just a political band aid to soothe the cannabis people. Think they're doing something when they're it's a joke and it's counter uh, to productivity and for patients' benefit. Some of the samples, some of the labs found mold in the very same homogenized sample that others found none. Well, let me digress to emphasize that cannabis can't be washed to pesticides like your apples and celery. It can't be washed for pesticides and it can't be washed with anything as far as uh, the heavy metals and other things that they put in it. And let me remind you that when you inhale spores from molds, they're inhaled to a warm, moist, spongy environment with somebody with immune compromised diseases, whether it's HIV or chemotherapy, that's gonna grow just like it does on bread. And HIV patients can die from bread mold. Now this reprehensible that they are not testing the labs or testing the cannabis. The labs are testing the stuff, but no one's testing the labs. When I called a, 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 a PhD that owns a lab here in town, I asked her, you know, I'm gonna do this study. And she said, oh Gil, the results will be all over the board. Well, she's right, that was my hypothesis. And she is right, the results are all over the board. Yes, Central River says it's tested and safe. Yeah. yeah. You think a 500% variance is, is adequate? <laughs> no. Hey, they paid her good money to say that. Yeah, they That's did. That's exactly right. Yeah. So I've had labs offer to fix results for us if they didn't come out the way that we wanted them. Well, I suspect that's why some wow. labs are really getting the business that report 45% by way of yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. oh Wonder how much that 45% <laughs> result costs you. <laughs> so, you know, after making probably 40 to $50 million to this point right now in this year or even more, the state still can't test for pesticides. They're still not monitoring the labs and they still can't tell medical cannabis that their stuff is safe because it isn't till proven otherwise. Got a couple more points and then we'll uh, sum it up. Um, now, briefly, I uh, talked a few points about the intimidation that 502 docs will undergo. And I'm telling you, Medical Quality Assurance Commission, you seemingly have two camps. The MDs are pretty acceptable, they can't argue with that. But the DOs, you know, there's two wings to MCRAC. The DOs are hell no, we're not going to authorize any more things. And uh, it's just uh, a difference in black and white, and I'm telling you, no one's going to be want to be drawn for that to have a chart review when they do over 30 clinical uh, cannabis patient authorizations in a month. They're absolutely crazy. It's an unpleasant system. So I think there'll be a huge, huge, huge need for any doctors that want to do these. Um, I guess my last point would be that uh, Go through them here. 
I've spoken to state legislatures all around the country, Missouri, invited to Nebraska, Colorado, and they figured it out in Colorado. Everything from the DUI issue to the home growth to the pesticide. You know, they've recently uh, confiscated a million dollars worth of cannabis plants because of pesticide exposure. They need to do that here, I'm telling you. And I, when I go to these states, I explain to them whether it's recreational or medical that you're looking at. There's a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way to do it. The right way is to do it the way Colorado did it. If you want to learn the hard way, if you want to do the wrong thing, if you want to store a war on patients, you want to get some unsafe stuff out there, follow the LCB's role in Washington. It's absolutely a disgrace, and you're learning the hard way. Yeah. Thank you. Steve asked uh, some medical cannabis activists for some predictions over the next five years what's going to happen in this state. Uh, or nationally with cannabis. I think it's going to be a long, circuitous, tortuous route to rescheduling it, but I'll tell you one thing that's going to happen. These people are going to get their ass sued because of the mismanagement of Woo! Woo! Yeah. One final point on the DUI thing. You know, I was uh, I started the pack on no on I-502 solely. I believe medical marijuana should be legal. I believe that recreation should be legal. But I oppose it solely on the 502 thing, uh, but the DUI. We said that it's going to imply impairment when there is none. Right. We didn't have the research back then, but since that time, Marilyn Houston at NIDA has come out with a study, her under study, Natalie DeSorius came out with a study. NIDA, produced by our government, says that at the five nanogram cutoff for active THC in the blood, at the five nanogram cutoff, that nearly 18% of regular cannabis daily users will be positive for DUI right. that five nanograms three days into total abstinence. Right. Wow. Nobody's going to tell a seasoned user they're very impaired any more than uh, sleep apnea would or listen to the radio after three minutes of smoking, let alone three hours, let alone three days. We knew this back then. We got no traction in the papers at all because they were all you know, pro-legalization. We know this now, and still the Seattle Times is, is putting this under the rug. But I'm telling you, we need to change that. Colorado, again, they've got it figured out. They'll, they have a five nanogram, but they also have a, but you can submit other evidence to prove that levels over that may not be implying impairment because your carboxy THC is so high, the metabolite, that they're saying, oh, this guy's probably not even impaired at 30, let alone right. 5, because right. the ratio implies they're a chronic user and well have tolerance there. Just like um, uh, like if I were to take a drag on a cigarette, I would have to sit down with just one drag would knock me flat. If I did two drags, I would be vomiting in a toilet. So nicotine would be majorly apparent to a novice user. Similarly, under the 5 nanogram level, a novice user can be impaired at 3 nanograms, just as nicotine drops me down. And you have a tolerance. Somebody's over here is a, a chain smoker going non-stop, you know. You know, that, that, there he is, raised his hand down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, you know, we must understand. That's why cannabinologists need to understand that some patients can function just fine on 140 nanograms. Yeah. Case in point, the more hands were raised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Case in point, Allison Bigelow. The Seattle Weekly did an article three years ago. Her level was 140, and she was stone cold sober as I am right here. Her reflexes, her recall, her spelling backwards, her five letter words, and serial sevens back from 100. As fast as the cop in the room, as fast as the reporter, as fast as the medical examining doctor did a neurological exam on her. So I'm telling you, there's a That's lot. That's because she was medicated, not stoned. That's exactly right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Appropriately medicated. Right. So I just. Uh, in, Closing, I want to salute the patients that are here today. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're here, and thanks for being wind in our cell. I want to salute the Viper PAC for, for uh, uh, bringing us together like this. And lastly, I want to call attention to this sign right over here. It sums it up. I, I saw it uh, hanging up on it. Can someone bring that sign to me, please? I saw it uh, being unused next to this car down here, and it says, patient over profit. Let's quit kidding ourselves. We know what's going on yeah. in this state building. It's profit over patience. Thank Thanks for letting me be here. I hope to be winning the sale. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Oh,